Hi, in today's video, we are going to analyze each and every branch of MDS after BDS. But before we begin, I hope you've seen our video MDS to do or not to do. Because before getting into MDS, you should be sure that MDS is the right choice for you. Once you have decided that, selecting the right branch is very important. We will be putting details of that video in the description below. Now, how are we going to analyze each and every branch of MDS? If you have seen that video, you are sure to remember that you should always decide based on your end goal. So, we have basically three end goals after doing MDS. First is, you can do general dental practice along with your specialization. Second is, you work only as a specialist either in your own clinic or as a consultant. And third is, you super specialize and get into a further niche. So we will be discussing about all these three options in each and every branch. And then we'll be discussing our opinion about it as well. I'm Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Now, coming to the first branch, prosthodontics. In prosthodontics, when it comes to general dentistry, what would you learn? You would learn things like prosthetic treatment planning that includes crown and bridges, dentures, that is complete dentures, removable dentures, cast partial dentures. You would also learn basics of implant dentistry, full mouth rehabilitation, and some amount of smile designing as well. When it comes to consultations, what you can look for? Denture consultations? Yes. Implant prosthetics? Yes. Full mouth rehabs? Yes. But you would be able to get these consultations only if you are able to convince dentists that you are good at it. Now when it comes to super specialization after prosthodontics, you can get into full mouth rehabs more completely. You can get into advanced implant dentistry. Other than that, there are two other niches which you can try. One is orofacial pain and TMJ disorder treatments and other is maxillofacial prosthodontics. These are areas where you can study further and get into a super niche. Now, what is my view about it? When it comes to prosthodontics, it is a really amazing branch. But if you are thinking of putting a general dentistry practice, you would learn around 50% of the things which you are going to apply in your practice. But two things which are bread and butter of dentistry, root canals and extractions, you would have to learn on your own if you are planning to do those procedures by yourself. Other than that, if you are planning to super specialize, TMJ and orofacial pain is an amazing field to get into as more patients are willing to get treatments done related to it. Other than that, maxillofacial prosthodontics is something you can think about. Because India being the capital of oral cancer, all these patients, once they are treated, need to get rehabilitated. Other than that, patients of trauma also need a maxillofacial prosthodontics. We have already made a video regarding that. I'll be posting the link of maxillofacial prosthodontics after MDS and prosto in the description below. The next field is periodontics and implant dentistry. When it comes to general dentistry, you will not be learning a lot of things which you can apply directly in a clinical practice. There are no root canals, there are no extractions, nothing of that sorts. You'd be only learning the periodontal aspects related to it. So when it comes to crown lengthening, you will know when it has to be done, how it has to be done. You will understand the importance of attached gingiva and other things around it. So if you are planning to do general dentistry after periodontics, there will be a lot of things you will have to learn so that you will be able to do them. When it comes to consultations of your periodontics, you can get into doing crown lengthening procedures, flap surgeries, grafting, implants and so on. Yes, periodontics plays a major role in success of the treatment. But the problem is, there is lack of awareness in India, not just among patients, but among BDS graduates as well. So getting a lot of consultations might be difficult. So it becomes your proactive approach which is important where you go to clinics show them the importance show your cases and that is how you can get into consultations 
The next part is, is there an option of super specialization in periodontics after MDS? You might get into implants or connective tissue grafting, bone grafting and things or such. So it is less of super specialization and more of skill enhancement after MDS. So like how you had in prosthodontics, maybe an orofacial pain or something. Those kind of options are not seen in periodontics. It is more focused on improving your skills as time goes by. So what is my opinion of periodontics as a speciality after BDS? The thing is, though I'm a periodontist, it is not an easy field to crack. You have to be good at your work and at your networking skills so that you get a lot of clinics to consult. If you're planning to put your own practice, there are a lot of other procedures which you also have to learn if you plan to do them by yourself. There is no separate super specialization in periodontics. So keeping these things in mind, if you still love surgeries, love doing implants, it's an amazing field to be in. But be sure you're willing to put in the extra effort. Moving on to third field, that is oral medicine and radiology. What are you going to learn in this? When it comes to general dentistry practice, which happens in a clinic, you're not going to learn a lot because all the basic diagnosis and treatment planning, hopefully you have already learned it during your BDS days and if you're working as an associate somewhere. What you're going to learn is basically certain additional diagnosis and treatment plannings when it comes to white lesions, red lesions and so on. So if you're planning to do general dentistry, then you're not going to learn a lot in oral medicine and diagnostic radiology. Then coming to the consultation part, it becomes difficult to get consultations because similar to periodontics, there is lack of awareness among the dentists of how to go about treating them. There are a lot of elderly patients who actually require to get treatment related to these kind of lesions in their oral cavity. But finding an oral medicine and diagnostic radiologist and getting themselves treated is something which they do not tend to do. Many patients do not follow all the treatment protocols prescribed by the dentist. Hence, it becomes tough treating such patients. Now, when it comes to OMDR and super specialization, what options do you have? Option number one, you can get into orofacial pain and temporomandibular joint disorder treatments. Second, you can join the various CBCT centers working as a radiologist. Or third, you can try and get into oral biology PhD programs which are provided by a few universities abroad, which are completely focused towards research. So if you have interest in research and plan to do that, you'll have to put a lot of effort in finding such universities and getting into them. So what is my opinion about the field of OMDR? If you're planning to get super specialized in orofacial pain, amazing scope. If you're trying to get into oral biology and research, it is tough but possible if you're planning to move abroad. In India, there's no much research currently going around it. Other than that, if you're thinking of putting a general dentistry practice, you're not going to learn a lot during your MDS days. You will have to put in effort and learn everything otherwise. When it comes to OMDR after BDS, we have already created a video with Dr. Vree Srinivasan. Please go and check it out in the description below. Now moving to the fourth branch, periodontics. In periodontics, if you're planning to put your own practice, a majority of them put a specialized periodontic practice and it is working currently very well in tier one and tier two cities. If you're planning to do general dentistry, not just treating pediatric patients, then you will also have to learn about adult dentistry, which is an all new ball game. So you'll have a lot of things to learn if you're planning to treat adult patients as well. Then comes consultation. There is a lot of scope again in tier one, tier two, and right now, even in tier three cities, when it comes to parents wanting dental treatment for their children. There are a lot of parents who are willing to spend money on their children rather than getting themselves treated. So right now, Pediatric dentistry is a good field when it comes to consultations. Then coming to super specialization. In periodontics, just like in periodontics, there is no specific super specialization as such. 
The other things you can do includes myofunctional treatment of your patients, working on special children and so on. These are again more on the basis of skill enhancement rather than super specialization. So what is my opinion about the field of periodontics? Yes, if you have an empathetic approach towards kids and love all kids of every type and nature, including the spoiled brats, then it's an amazing field to be in. We have already done an interview with Dr. Ashwin Javdekar about periodontics has a branch after BDS. Go and check that video out. We'll be putting a link of it in the description below. Coming to the field number five, orthodontics. Now in orthodontics, you're not going to learn much about general dentistry. So if you're planning to do general dentist practice along with orthodontics, you have to learn a lot of things. When it comes to consultation, orthodontics are currently in demand. But with the advent of aligners, there are a lot of general dentists who are also getting into orthodontics in terms of aligners or maybe doing basic orthodontics in themselves. So we do not know what the future will hold. When it comes to super specialization, there is no such super specialization as such. There is only skill enhancement like learning about aligners, learning about intrusion further, learning how to treat cleft palate patients so on and so forth. So what is my opinion about orthodontics after BDS? In the current scenario, it's a good branch to go in. But with artificial intelligence and aligners coming in together, I really do not know what is the future of orthodontics 10 or 15 years from now. The next field is public health dentistry. When it comes to general dentistry, you're not going to learn much in most universities and colleges related to practicing general dentistry on patients. So if you're planning to put your own practice eventually, you're not going to learn anything during your MDS years. Next comes the part of consultations. After finishing MDS and PhD, a few of them get into tobacco cessation consultations and counseling as well as oral cancer counseling. Other than that, there is no much consultation when it comes to clinical dentistry aspect. Then a few public health dentists get into the public health sector. My take on this entire MDS in public health dentistry is if you're planning to get into the public health sector and field, you already have competition from the MPH and MHA graduates. Is an MDS in PhD really going to help you? or help you stand out as compared to the competition, I'm not sure about it. So is this going to be a very beneficial MDS degree for you? Again, I cannot answer that. Always see what you can do with the degree before you dive into doing it. Before you listen to our analysis and opinion of rest of the branches, if you're enjoying the video, please do not forget to hit the like button below because we have put a lot of effort to come up with such videos. And I'm sure you're subscribed to our channel if you're planning to take your career in dentistry to the next level. The next branch is endodontics and conservative dentistry. When it comes to general dentistry, you will be learning a lot about it in endodontics. It would be root canals, re-root canals, composite restorations, inlay, onlays, crowns, post and a lot more. The only aspect which you might not learn during your MDS is the surgical aspect including extractions. So if you're planning to put a general dentistry practice after your MDS, this is a good branch to be in. Then comes the consultation aspect with a large number of patients willing to spend money to save their tooth. There is an increased need of specialists, not just with root canals who can even do re root canals and complex endodontic treatment. So if you're willing to go in that route, there are consultations available as well. Then comes the super specialization aspect. There is no such super specialization in endodontics like in other fields. There is skill enhancement. You can get into things like micro endodontics or minimal invasive dentistry. What is my opinion about the field? According to me, there's a lot of scope when it comes to endodontics and conservative dentistry. 
The next field to consider is oral pathology. When it comes to general dentistry, you are not going to learn much in oral pathology. When it comes to consulting, there is not a lot of consulting once you complete your MDS in it. The only option you have is to get maybe into research if you actually want to put your degree into use. When it comes to research, it is similar to what I spoke about oral medicine and diagnostic radiology. The option is oral biology and there is not a lot of universities providing research opportunities in them. So what is my opinion about the field? I cannot think of a lot of opportunities you can get into with an oral pathology degree. The next branch is oral surgery. When it comes to general dentistry, you are not going to learn anything in oral surgery other than extractions and surgical procedures. The next part is the consultation part. In oral surgery, you do not just get consultation opportunities in dental clinics, but you also can tie up with various hospitals and get into maxillofacial surgeries. When it comes to super specialization after oral surgery, there are quite a few options. For example, you can become a cleft lip and palate surgeon. We have already created a video about it. You can check it in the description below. You can become an onco surgeon. In India, with the number of oral cancer cases, the requirement of oncosurgeons is only going to increase. We have also made a video related to oncosurgery as an option after oral and maxillofacial surgery, MDS. You can check that video also in the description below. Then there is an option of getting into facial cosmetology procedures like hair transplants or even getting into advanced implant surgeries like zygomatic implants or patient specific or patient customized implants. So what is my take or opinion about the field? It is an amazing field if you're planning to super specialize in and to stick to one specific niche. It is not great if you want to do general dentistry, but there is a lot of scope when it comes to oncosurgery, facial cosmetology, implants and so on. Do not forget to watch till the end because we'll be telling you about the other two factors you should consider while selecting your branch. Now what I've told out here is about the current scope based on my opinion on each and every branch. But there are other two important factors which you should consider while selecting what branch is the right one for you. Those are your strengths and your interests. We have explained that in detail in our book Dental Launchpad. The links for all the videos I spoke about can be found in the comment section and the description below. Once you select your MDS branch, selecting the perfect university or college to do it from is equally important. And we have created a video explaining the points you should consider while selecting your MDS college. So go and check that video next. And if you have any other opinion about any of these branches, please feel free to post them in the comment section below.